It's time for a word. Somebody out there saying, I've been through hell and high water this week. I need a word. Somebody else is saying, I've been through the storm and rain this week. I need a word. Somebody else might be saying, I've experienced some heartache and pain this week. I need a word. And so I thank God. I thank God that, that God has a word. And he had a word, has a word with your name on it. And I don't know what I would do if I could not <laughs> get a word. Amen. Do y'all y'all gonna give me a few minutes to, to share this word? Amen. That is why we came here, right? Amen. Amen. We took a picture just in case that if you need to capture the moment, amen. You'll remember that not only you got a word, but then you also shared in a awesome uh, event with these young people. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited because what God is doing. So. Look at somebody, look at somebody while you're sitting down and tell them this. Say, today is your blessed day. Today is your blessed day. Now throw a smile at them. Now hold on now, I better say, don't throw your teeth. <laughs> Just throw a smile at them. <laughs> Y'all laughing, I remember when Pastor Joe preached in here our first service. He was preaching, his teeth flew out, and he caught them jokers way out here and put them back in with one motion. And some of the people that wasn't there, they probably don't believe it, but that's the truth. That is the truth. So now, did they smile back? Okay. If they didn't smile back, look at the other person beside you and say, today is your blessed day. Now bless them with a smile. Bless them with a smile. Show them all 22s, you know. You know, 20, no, some people are 22s. Amen. You done, you done pulled the wisdom teeth. You you done pulled the laughing teeth, the funny teeth, all kind of teeth. You only got 22 left. Praise God, but you still got that, you still got that steak, that steak and, uh, steak and eggs tooth. That one tooth that can break it down. Amen. Say knowledge, knowledge. understanding, understanding. Revelation, revelation, and determination is the key to my change. Knowledge, knowledge. understanding, knowledge. revelation, and determination is the key to my blessing. Say, we are a teaching ministry. Say, if I am taught the word of God, my life will change for the better. Say, we are a teaching ministry. Say, if I allow myself to be susceptible to the word of God, my life will change for the better. Say, if I'm not taught the word of God, my life will remain the same. Tell somebody, let's get this word, let's get this word, let's get this word, let's get this word. Listen, uh, last week we started, we started this series uh, entitled, You Don't Want to Pay the Price for Discipleship. You Just Want a Window Shop. You, you, don't, you don't want to pay the price for discipleship. You just want to window shop. And uh, it was an uh, uh, awesome, awesome word. It was an awesome, amen. That one person, that one person was here last week. Was it, a, was it a blessing to you last week? Amen. Amen. So it was an awesome word. And last week we... It was amazing to look at the faces uh, with the text that we kicked it off with, the passage of scripture that we kicked it off with. Uh, uh, let me say this before I move on any further. Uh, if you got an empty seat beside you, just touch it real quick and say, seat, be filled. Be filled with my friends. Be filled with my family and even my foes, in the name of Jesus, seat, be filled. So we kicked it off with a challenging text out of Luke 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 25 and 26. Uh, and it was, I, I was at the, when I went home, I just really sat back and just laughed in my spirit. And uh, uh, 
I almost said giggled in my spirit, but when I was growing up, uh, my mama said, boys don't giggle. And so <laughs> I ain't never seen that rule written nowhere, but you know, giggling was giggling. It was like a partial laugh on what I thought. But since my mama said, boys don't giggle, because generally you giggle because you don't want to do a full laugh. So it was almost like she didn't know what we were laughing about, so you better not even giggle. So in order to stop the giggling, uh, in fear of getting in trouble, she would tell us, boys don't giggle. Me and my cousin Eric would uh, be you know, playing and giggling about stuff. Normally it was mischievous stuff, because we was young kids, and we didn't want our mamas to know you know, what it transpired or whatever, what we was laughing about, you know. Uh, but she said, boys don't giggle. I don't know how I got on that. Maybe somebody needs to say it about giggle. I don't know. It's just a word about giggle, you know. So uh, <laughs> let, me, let me give you just a snippet of last week to bring you up. Uh, Luke 14, 25, 26, American Standard Version. Just a snippet. Um, and it basically it will give me an opportunity to corral your thinking into this setting, focusing on this subject concerning discipleship, um, because I know some of us had that type of week, perhaps, leading up to, to today. Uh, you left that type of house en route to get here, and even when you got here, you had one of those type of spirits, whereas you were just all over the place and not in this place focusing on what God would have you. So I just, just, just want to quickly just, just uh, read it and just kind of get you tied in. In American Standard Version, verse 25 says, Now there went with him, talking about with Jesus, great multitudes, and he turned and said unto them, verse 26, If any man, now notice this part, this part, if you never read this before, it's going to trip you out. If any man cometh unto me, this is Jesus talking, and hateth not his own father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, in his own life also, so meaning even him, himself, or herself, he cannot be my disciple. That sounds strong, wasn't it? So now, <laughs> listen, I know that sounds crazy. I know that sounds crazy. Uh, but in a nutshell, in the teaching last week, and I broke it down. And uh, you just have to look at it on YouTube or whatever. God has blessed us to the point where we can put the full message on YouTube. And I just love it. Because there are people out there that's never even been to Kansas City. And they are thanking the media team uh, for uploading the full message. Other people, they give you a little snippet. And uh, uh, then they want you to buy the rest. But I don't know if your blessing is on the portion that we didn't post. So I said, just post everything. I said, post everything. So uh, in a nutshell, last week, concerning this passage of scripture, Jesus is calling for a commitment. That's it, from you and I. He's calling for a commitment that is so great that anything by comparison will be deemed as hatred. Meaning there, there's, in your life, in my life, there should not be one relationship in your life with your mama, daddy, husband, wife, brethren, cousins, them, and all that. There should not be one relationship that's equal to your relationship with Christ. And that is what the scripture was talking about. But if you don't study, and if you don't ask God for uh, clarity, in understanding, then really, if you just read this like you read the jet, the ebony, you know, the uh, time, better home than garden, you know, why I seem like most people, you go and you see that magazine at their house and they yard still tore up. It's like they just like looking at somebody else's before they go out and have to face theirs. And I think them same people, because the pictures of the lawns in the magazine are so manicured and they're so excited about, you know, uh, just the thought of this one that when they leave their house, they probably run to their car because they had to see their yard. You know, newsflash. When you buy those magazines, it's a help magazine. It's to help you get yours together. 
if you buy a magazine with hairstyles, ladies, it's a help magazine. So you can help get yours together, you know. That's why pastor's not even buying no muscle magazine, because I'm not trying to get no help. I'm just telling you, it's going to come off in due time or else it ain't coming off. So, 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 <laughs> so, so never allow anything or anyone or any situation cause you to see Christ at the same level as everyone else. Okay? Are we good? Can I move on? Amen. Amen. Y'all look quiet on me. So, so we're talking discipleship. We're talking discipleship or um, being a disciple as opposed to just being a member. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm just not a member. So now, can I share, can I share this with you? Consider this. Consider this. Uh, in the natural, in the natural, or in the corner, if you will, one can be a member of a group or a place and never show up physically. That's interesting, isn't it? Now, well, guess what? In the spiritual realm, uh, church, if you will, one could be a member and never show up spiritually. That's deep. Physically, they're present and accounted for. But spiritually, there's a, they're absent. That's why it's so oh so important that we know the difference between membership and discipleship. Okay, quickly look at John chapter 13, verse 34. John 13, 34. I think I only got one scripture for you today. Because I knew that our time was going to be taken up with these high school grads, these associates enrolling for next year for the bachelor program grads, those bachelors, you know, enrolling in the master's program, and then those masters enrolling in the doctor program, and then I don't know what our doctors gonna enroll in. They just gonna be doctors. Doctor, doctor. Do y'all be at home talking about doctor? Doctor, <laughs> doctor get up and make me some eggs. And then Melissa, I'm a doctor too. You make me some eggs. <laughs> Are y'all there? King James Version. King James Version. Let me, let me give this to you. King James Version puts it like this. It says, a new commandment mm, I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. This is Jesus talking, by the way, just just in case if you didn't know, he said, as I have loved you, that ye also, so he comes right back and reiterated. Just in case, if somebody still is trying to say in 2015, he wasn't talking to me. He, and, and no, he wasn't talking about love. I know he wasn't. He comes right back and said, that ye also love one another. Now, let me share this with you. I'm sure that uh, I myself have preached or taught this passage on several occasions over the past 30 years, because this is my July the 21st would be my 30th year in ministry. 30 years in ministry. I know the first time visit saying, he don't even look that old. I'm not, I'm just 32, hey, amen. <laughs> 32 plus some. <laughs> Praise be to God for Miss Clairol. Amen. Yeah, Miss Clairol. That's my other woman. So, oh, for people that don't know hair products, that's a dye. Because somebody be on Facebook coming. I couldn't believe the pastor that church. He straight out said his woman's name. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but considering everything that has transpired in this text, considering everything that has transpired, it's very clear that it's a text to refocus the believer. When you look at, when you look at this text, 
considering everything that had taken place up until this point, it's a text to refocus the believer. Do I got 11, 11 men in here? Maybe, maybe they need to see this. 11 men, raise your hand if you're a grown man. Give me 11 men up here real quick. Amen. 11 men. Amen. 11 men. 11 men. I need to, to paint this picture to you. Just, just sit over here. Step. Just come on. Step. Yeah, come on. Sit over here. Get about five or six of y'all. Okay. Now, I want y'all, somebody try to sit on the bottom step. It might have to be one of the shorter guys. See, the short guy, they, they can handle the bottom step. And, uh, okay. Now, considering everything that had taken place, because remember, this passage of scripture uh, is right on the heels of the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, whereas Jesus told Judas that whatever you have to do, do it quickly, meaning he was betraying him. Y'all remember that, right? This past Resurrection Sunday, our drama was based off of that. Now, so you can imagine, you can imagine the, uh, possibly the concern the unanswered questions that was in the room, and even when you put it in terms of your situation, uh, needing to get back on track, this is what Christ did. Talking to the disciples. Y'all disciples, didn't know y'all going to be disciples, did y'all? <laughs> y'all just didn't know. Well, they like, man, they ain't even got my suit on. No. But uh, talking to the disciples, and I'm glad they got staggered. And understand this. As you even see these men on different levels, notice no one set up on the top stairs with pastor. So even so with Jesus, we ain't going to never be on the same level with him. And when he speaks, uh, we are to listen. When he speaks through his word, when he speaks through his spirit, when he speaks to your heart, it's for us to line up with his voice, line up with his word. Regardless if you are on a, a lower level in your spiritual walk than someone else. And even though that you are been doing this a long time spiritually and you have climbed some levels, if you will, spiritually, understand that the same word for him is the same word for you. And the same word for him is the same word for him, you know. Now, we, we got in, any, any y'all, 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 all y'all wives got dresses on to these spouses up here, right? Is anybody that says spouses up here and you got on pants? You do? Your, your husband up here? Okay, c come on, sit by your husband real quick. Come on, if your man is up here and you got on pants, because we don't want to go through getting all the things and stuff like that, because I'm just trying to paint this picture real quick. To, to make it relevant even in your home. To make it relevant even in your home. <clears throat> you could have brought her with you. Go, go, go get her. Matter of fact, get her. Bring her with you. There we go. Bring her with you. Because this is, I'm, I'm speaking now uh, to the families. I'm speaking to the families. So, as you can see here, that, uh, oh, thank, thank, praise be to God. See, this is, this is helping me out. Notice with this couple, these two couples, their spouse is right with them on the same step. There may be someone else out there that may be one of the spouses or a little bit further advanced spiritually. Y'all see, see that? Because she's on a lower level. But still and yet, you are, you are together going through. And this, what the Lord is saying is that like never before, when you are faced with a challenge, finance challenge, or, or your, and you see, you always got one family member to drag behind, but that's fine. They catch up. <laughs> She's she like, oh, they ain't leaving me, you know. <laughs> when you face with a financial challenge, Jesus is saying, get the focus back. Get the focus back. And one way to get the focus back is love. You can never go wrong if you apply love. Have you ever noticed somebody can be falling out with you, call themselves hating your guts, 
But in it, the world tries to say, kill them with kindness. But Jesus is saying, heal them with love. Oh, y'all missed that. That's your, that's your Facebook post for the day for some of you that's not really that creative. The world will say, kill them with kindness. But Jesus says, heal them with love. Not kill them with love, but heal them with love. Meaning, listen, in order for you to walk in love or continue to walk back in love, you got to let some things go. You got to let some things go. Soon as Judas left the room, Judas was no longer a factor. This was the factor. The other disciples. So guess what? Listen, it basically saying we got a job to do. So a new commandment. I know that, that we've said this commandment before, but a new commandment that I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And listen, if you can't do that, then you'll be stuck in a rut. You'll be stuck in a rut. Now, even for those who have ministry, if you can't realign your thoughts and focus on love, and we know from the scripture that God is love, if you can't focus on love or focus on God, then your ministry will come to a standstill. It will come to a halt. So everyone that was riding your ministry train, meaning everyone that you were uh, witnessing to and everyone that you were, you were a prayer partner with and so on and so forth, when that train stopped, guess what? All the passengers had to stop that you carry. So he said a new commandment. Thank y'all. Y'all got real comfortable. He said a new commandment that I give unto you. Wow. So, <laughs> Jesus. So when we look at this, listen, Jesus said the word new, didn't he? When we put the scripture, it's the same thing in your Bible, right? Now, he said the word new, not because there was no command concerning love before that moment in time. That ain't why he said the word new. Let me help you out. Because listen, that had already been established way before Jesus physically hit the scene. The commandment of love. It had already been established. God had already seemingly taken care of that. Already taken care of that. Okay, I know this is show and tell Sunday. Give me, give me the third book of the Bible. Some of y'all saying the third book. Come to Wednesday night. Come to Wednesday night. Some people, that's a shame. They only know the first one. Uh, Genesis and the last one, Revelation. If you start saying, some, name some of the ones, well, you know them four dudes in the middle. They referring to four gospels. So the book of Leviticus, come on, meet me at Leviticus 19 and 18, King James Version. I got to show you that, that love was already uh, instituted as far as the, the mandate for us to love. Okay, y'all there? So in the King James Version, it says, thou shalt not avenge. Tell somebody, just let it go. <laughs> nor bear any grudge. Tell them, don't even think about it. <laughs> get it out your heart. Get it out your spirit. Y'all scared to tell them? Say, get it out your heart. Get it out your spirit. <laughs> he said, against the children of thy people. That's, that's everybody. That's everybody. Save, unsaved. It's just everybody. Just make it everybody. He said, but thou shalt, thou shalt love. Y'all see that? Thy who? Thy neighbor. Look at your neighbor to your left. Say, he talking about me and you. Look at your neighbor to your right. Say, he talking about me and you. He said, as thyself. Mm. Then he said, I am the Lord. Now, but let me back up. I, ooh, I just thought it. You know, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Maybe that's why in the beginning the Lord had me to have you to hug yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, then that's a problem. Because how can you really love others with an agape, you know, unconditional love if you don't love yourself? 
So you have to first love yourself in a relationship with the holy. Mm. So now, okay, what about the NIV version? Give me the NIV version. NIV says, puts it like this. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. It's, it's, um, it's really like it's really like the Lord was speaking and saying listen I'm daddy that's, that's conversation's over that's really what he's saying so so because you know how people you can tell people and they say but 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 but, but you don't understand you don't understand see you don't, you don't know what I did with you don't know what I go through but the Lord is saying he's saying don't seek revenge let it go he said don't bear a grudge so that kills that old, you know, I forgive you, but I'm not going to forget. When you're saying I'm not forgetting, you're going to still bear a grudge. So that kills that. So the devil is alive. You don't even have that slogan anymore on your heart. You just let it go. So, so he says, uh, but love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So, so why is it? So, so why was it new? Why was it new? So why was it new then, preacher? I hear somebody. I, I, I know somebody is saying that in their spirit with their smart aleck self. Well, well why is the scripture uh, saying uh, it's new? Why are they saying that? Well, look at what Christ said. And look at what Christ said. Let's go back to my, my other one, which is uh, King James Version, John 13 and 34. Look at what, look at what Christ said. In addition... To a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another he follows up with even as I have loved you he follows up with that so listen we always want to be a people who says uh, show me what you're working with we always want to be that type of people. No matter uh, our nationality, our race, there's something about, you know, show me. Show me. Show me what you're working with. Well, guess what? In this scripture, Jesus is saying, I've already shown you. <sighs> Jesus. So, so now since he has shown us that it can be done, then why are we still outside looking through life's window when the love of discipleship is inside. Now, because we said that the, the series text is uh, you don't want to pay the price for discipleship, you just want a window shop. Okay, so, so, so why is it that we're outside looking through life's window when the love of discipleship is on the inside? Now listen, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. You've been hurt. Listen, I hear you. You, uh, you think that you are protecting your present from your past. I do hear you. Now, consider this. Consider this, if you will. Consider this. Jesus more than fulfilled the uh, mosaic precept, meaning the uh, general rule, if you will. He more than fulfilled that. Listen, he not only... He not only loved his neighbor as himself, but he loved his neighbor more than he loved himself. Well, what do you mean by that, brother pastor? Because he laid down his life. Have you ever considered that in your thoughts? How, listen, let me just ask you, how neighborly have you been? I mean, even in the natural have you done something, uh, 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 sh shared such favor concerning your neighbor that it left them scratching their head? And this is how you know that you've been more neighborly than your neighbor when they tell you, you didn't have to do that. Really? And then they try to, how, how much do I owe you? And when, it's in, when it was in your heart to do it, guess what? You say, don't worry about it. God, you know. God just told me to, to bless you. Yeah. Don't worry about it. 
you know, for whatever, whatever reason, for whatever it's worth, just, just enjoy it. We, when we just came back from, from, from Dallas on our trip, I'm still tripping that we was riding in the rain. I'm still tripping. But uh, we real bikers. And as soon as we leave the state, they start shooting and killing each other. We said, we ain't going back down there. And so <laughs> so uh, I thought about it when we stopped by uh, the lady, Sue, her upholstery place that the lady be on TV on Fast and Loud. That's one of my favorite shows. And, uh, and I was telling her that, I said, they over at the other place, uh, uh, Gas Monkey Garage. That's the garage where they be fixing and flipping them cars. I told her, I said, Sue, they sold my fire truck. And she said, her next words were, somebody gave me a fire truck. You know, she, I'm trying to do her voice. She's like Filipino. She said, was it close? Was, it wasn't? Okay. She said, <laughs> I know I asked Queen. She's going to tell me the truth all the time. But she said, somebody gave me a fire truck. You want to see? And she walked me in the back. I mean, a beautiful fire truck. Y'all see it on the pictures on Facebook. And I'm like, man, I wish somebody just give me one, you know. But can you imagine? I mean, it's already fixed up. This wasn't no raggedy thing. Somebody was so neighborly to, neighborly to her that they gave something that I'm sure that they loved. Some people, listen, you had cars sitting up in your driveway until they rot when they could have been given away to somebody. And you know good and well, you probably weren't going to ever drive it no more. All they probably needed was some brakes, you know. That would have still been a blessing for somebody. Just to buy, have to buy some brake shoes and that's it? And you're going to bless me with a car? That, that, that would have been a blessing. But you set up and you let it rot till it turned into literally a Flintstone car. Kids playing in it, they could see the ground. That's why I mean a Flintstone car, because they could see the, literally see the ground and they playing in it. I'm trying to teach you how to be neighborly. So now, so, so in this case, Jesus calls upon the disciples when he was sitting down with them. He called upon the disciples to imitate him. You cannot go wrong if you imitate Christ. Hear me when I say this. You cannot, if you're going to copycat then copy off of God, off of Jesus. You cannot go wrong. You, listen, you mess around and, and thinking wearing your pants backwards is the latest fad because you just saw somebody come out of a building, not realizing they coming out of an insane asylum, and now you done went home and threw your pants on backwards, and now everybody looking at you like you done lost your mind because you thought it looked cool on that one person, not realizing that one person got some mental issues you cannot go wrong if you imitate Christ I better say that again let me say it maybe, maybe I need to say it a little softer you can't go wrong if you imitate Christ and don't don't make it the last choice don't say I failed at everything else. I'm talking to this church right here. I, I felt at everything else. So I'm going to do that Jesus thing. Matter of fact, listen, I'm going to tell you, you're going to save yourself some heartache, some headache, and some money if you just learn how to what, WWJD? If you learn how to WWJD, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Somebody thought I was, great. I was talking about motor oil. They're like, WW, I know 1040, but I don't know JD. So you will save yourself. Before, before you get to all that heartaches, heartaches, and money, and all that other stuff, let's just stop it. You will save yourself. Because that's the most potent and powerful of all the words before all the rest of them words. If you imitate Christ, now, I'm talking about your soul now, obviously. If you imitate Christ, you will save yourself. Okay, let me give you other option. If you imitate the world, or if you imitate the devil, Lucifer, you will lose yourself. I don't care what 
the level of imitation is and what you stand to gain by imitating Lucifer, what does a man profit to gain the whole world and mess around and lose his soul? So, so he was telling, he was telling uh, them to imitate him. Even today, he calls us, the believers, to imitate him. Okay, let me look, look at the text again. In the King James Version, it says a new commandment. A new commandment. I'm almost done. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Right, right? Now, okay, let me put it in another way. And they probably don't have this version, but in the basic English translation, it says, I give you a new law. So let me flip it like that. As believers, we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. Maybe the commandment little word was too spiritual, religious for you, and it really didn't ring a bell. But as believers, when it comes to love, when we say that we're connected to the holy, we're connected to God, we don't have a choice. If you're bona fidely a follower of Christ, well, why do you say that? It says in the basic English translation, I give you a new law. And it's a law for us to not break. Uh, Boy, they quiet as me. I love it. He said, now, as I give you a new law, have love for another. So don't be going around hating. Don't be going around throwing, y'all know what I'm going to say, right? Shade. Don't be going around throwing, sh that's not love. Tell somebody that's not love. Back in the day, they say mean mugging. Don't be going around mean, for those of you still mean mugging, you just got stuck in that face. You know, ask God to free you from that face. So, so it said, I, I as, even as I have had love for you, so are you to have love one for another. So, so when you look at it, the law is that we love one another. The law is, as much as some of us don't want to stomach it, the law is that we love our enemy. It does not say anywhere in the scripture, just love your friends. This Christian walk would be easy, wouldn't it? If, we just, if, if it just said that, just love, your, just love those that love on you. It, man, this would be so... Everybody would want to be a Christian. It, it, listen, it wouldn't even be a humongous cost for discipleship if all you had to do is like those that like you. Smile at those who smile at you. Do good unto those who do good unto you. It wouldn't even that bad. But knowing the, the fact is that you have to love everyone, you have to do good for everyone, you have to smile at everyone, that, that makes it tell your neighbor, that makes it challenging sometimes. Ain't no good sense of having you line up in the church. Y'all know it makes it challenging. Even the pastor had to step back, check in with the Holy Ghost. So what was I thinking about? Hallelujah, what was I thinking about? I, I check, I'm, your, I'm being transparent. I'm your pastor. You know, I'm, listen, I, if, you, if you cut me, I bleed just like you do. If you pinch me, it's going to hurt just like if I pinch you. And, and on a bad day, because you pinched me and you let me pinch you back, I might just apply just a little bit more pressure than what you applied on me. So, you know, I'm still at work too. But my point is, all of us have to focus. If we, if we get behind love, <laughs> then loving our enemies won't be a problem. The law is that we, this is the law that he laid down, that we lay down our lives for each other. That's the word. Then we wonder, we wonder why people do, you, they, they do some, listen, what we would deem to be crazy things for somebody they don't even know. You'd be like, man, he didn't even know her. He didn't even know this. She didn't even know. But they did that for them. They, that's a, a way of laying down their lives. When, when you say, listen, I'm going to take a pause and I'm going to do this for this person right here that is going to benefit them. And I know I'm going to lose from it be it money, time, or something, you have just laid down your life. 
You just laid it down. Were you blessed today? Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet all over the building.